You know, the old saying goes that you get one chance to make a first impression, but I got to tell you, I had to reshoot this video like 30 times. Too often, though, new school leaders don't get the chance to reshoot, and they make a major misstep with one action when there are three that are better worth their time. We're going to get into those here. Let's develop some success criteria. When you walk away after watching this video, as a new leader, you'll understand there are three areas where to put your effort and one area you should probably avoid. But I have a big ask first. If you find this video helpful, please consider giving a like by pressing the button below and subscribing to the channel as well. I have other videos that are focused on teaching, learning, and leading here. So let's start with the action leaders rarely should begin with, which is trying to change something teachers are doing. And I'm not saying that eventually Teachers and leaders won't work together to improve practices. It's, it's called collaborative leadership, but going in as a new leader and making an announcement like all teachers will have to hand in their lesson plans on a rotating basis will probably upset the apple cart and do serious damage to school climate. And too often leaders feel that need to enforce some new rule like handing in lesson plans because they want to show they're competent or sometimes that they have the power when in fact the change may illustrate incompetence instead. Changing something right away many times comes from a lack of understanding of what is actually taking place in the school. And, you know, we can make drastic changes to protocols, but only if it's for safety reasons. Other times it can just wait. However, what leaders can do is take the responsibility to engage with teachers and students in different ways than maybe those groups have experienced before. It's about engaging in positive leadership habits before forcing teachers to change their habits. And there are three places to begin. Number one, study the yearbook. I know that sounds kind of strange, but it can really be hugely impactful. When I was hired to be a new principal, I was still teaching in another district, but I was encouraged to visit the school where I would be leading as often as my schedule allowed, which was awesome. One of the most brilliant things my future secretary did was hand me the yearbook and tell me to study the names and pictures of the students and staff, and I did it. She even wrote the name of the teacher's spouse or partner next to the teacher's picture so I'd have that information. I studied it and learned the names of so many people before I even officially began. It was so well worth my time. Number two, get in the classroom. I know this sounds like common sense, but many times leaders feel the pressure to hang in the main office, check email and other management duties because that's sort of a safe place. As a new principal, for all the years I led, I visited every classroom nearly every single day. I made time first thing in the morning to do my morning rounds and again during the day. I loved getting into classrooms, still do it now as a leadership coach because I like going in with a non-judgmental attitude and going in as a learner and not as a critic to see what students are learning. Number three, figure out your entry point. Where do you fit in to the greater good. New leaders try to figure, have to figure out where they fit in. So many times teachers are trying to see where they fit in with the new leader. It's actually the opposite. The new leader needs to see where they fit in with their staff. Leadership is hard, but it's totally rewarding. I always say, be the principal you think you could be, the principal you want to be, not the principal that you think you have to be. It's not about the power we have. It's actually about the relationships we create with the staff. That's where the real power is. Thanks for watching.